Ramona Shelburne, one of our absolute favorites with ESPN, with further perspective on this. Uh, Ramona, hey, always great to have you. How you doing? Good. How are you? Yeah, uh, we're good. I mean, what what's your take on that? Like, I the the league is 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 sort of saying what? Like, you you actually think they think that Draymond Green's got sort of an inner mental health issue all of the sudden, or are they simply on the real saying we we do not want this to be part of our brand? Um, I think it was, uh, I think it's more the second, you know, like the second thing you just said, where it's whatever it is, like every time you talk to Draymond, every time one of these incidents happen, he is always very compelling. He has an explanation. He like, you know, even after the Nurkic thing, he was very compelling and talking about, I was trying to sell the flo- the foul and, you know, blah, blah, you know, et cetera. And I think it's, it's just, there's too many incidents too close together. And it's and it's not it's not about what happens on each one. There's almost not even a differentiation between incidents now. Like to me, the the thing with Nurkic was like completely different than the Gobert situation, right? Like the Nurkic one, I thought was reckless. The Gobert one, I thought was more intentional. Like that was a bigger issue to me. Um, but like they all end up in the same category because they're so close together and because the spotlight is so much on him and. I think the league is really torn here because they they want the Warriors to be good, right? Like, they, like of course, the league is better off when the Warriors are compelling and good, and Draymond is one of the great personalities in this game. He has relationships with two rights holders, right, with, with ESPN and with TNT. He's on, he's on camera for TNT. He does a podcast. Like, he will be the next Charles Barkley whenever he gets done playing, right? And so – they they want Draymond Green in the league. They just can't keep having the, the you know these incidents pop up because it's a terrible look for the league every time, right? And I think it's um, you know they've given him and the Warriors you know chance after chance to sort of make it stop, and they and just sort of haven't been able to. Yeah, it can't stop, won't stop because it's what yeah. Dr- and basically it's how Draymond plays. He plays on that edge, but now we sit with an indefinite. Suspension and Ramona, Warrior fans are asking indefinite. Yes, I get that, but what is necessary? What are the checkpoints for him to clear in order for him to get back? Because it seems very nebulous yeah. in terms of like, what does he have to go to twenty two counseling sessions and be able to look at a picture of Rudy Gobert and not want to choke it? Yeah, no. I mean, to me, it's it's um, you know, he the, the last time the league did this. It was a. Uh, it was with Kyrie Irving, right? Last year when there was the anti-Semitic post, and then there was the the bad press conferences, and it was just like one terrible news cycle after another. I think there was like three or four terrible news cycles after another, and it was like the suspension was indefinite. You know, I think first the Nets did something, then the league did something, and then it was like, you know, it ended up being eight games or something, right? And then I think that I think all told sounds right, was, yeah. Some of it was time he had already served, um, and he had to acknowledge a, acknowledge something, and he had to meet with some Jewish leaders, and, you know, there was a few things that he had to do. Um, so I think with, um, I think with um, you know, with, with Draymond, like, they'll, they'll, they'll have some things that he needs to do, you know? They'll have a, a checklist of whatever, and... Hold on a second. My five-year-old is like banging on the door and needs something. Do it. Nice. Do it. Yeah, there you go. Okay. He's like, I left my juice in your room. And I'm like, I, you know, you can wait five minutes. Oh, but that's a flagrant yeah. one for the five-year-old for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so he, uh, he's very persuasive when he needs to be. So I think the league, um, I think the league is like, you know, they, they just need him to, Show them enough of um, a ch- I don't I want to say a change, but enough of an understanding that this really won't happen again. And I think what's hard for Draymond is that the way he plays is on the edge. Like he he has that passion and intensity and fire, and like that's what makes him Draymond. And so, you know, how, how do you be Draymond? Like it's like taking a lion and putting him in a zoo. I mean, you can't. How do you do that? You know, like he's a lion. It's, it's huh. it, you know, how yep. are you going to be the same guy if you're, if you're worried? And, and I think with him, it's, you know, he has always said like, well, uh, I know how to keep it in check. Like when I have 15 texts, I don't, I don't yell at the refs and I know how to, 
whatever. But like, you know, the sort of wild swings and the, the go bear thing, obviously. And, you know, those are just this the Sabonis stomp. Like, I, I mean, I think he's aware that those are lines that when you cross them, he's going to get the, 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 the heat is going to be on. Uh, Ramona Shelburne, ESPN, with us. I'm going to ask you something that is in stark contrast to the word indefinitely. But in your opinion, Ramona, a Warrior fan should be thinking what in terms of a reasonable amount of time uh, that, that that we're not going to see Draymond? Mm, a couple weeks, you know. Feels like, feels like, are we going to see, you know, do they want to bring him back before Christmas? Do they want those headlines heading into the biggest TV day of the of the of this part of the year outside of the finals, right? You know, do they want that? Do you want it after Christmas and I kind of get through that Christmas game and then turn the page and, and maybe that's it, you know, and maybe in between Christmas and New Year's, like, you know, whatever it is, like, he, you know, he hasn't, like, I, I, it's, it's funny that the Nurkic thing is the final straw because that was kind of, to me, at least I don't know how it played for you guys. Like, I... I thought it was reckless. I, I didn't think he, you yeah. know, he looked, he looked like a wild swing, but I don't think he was trying to punch the guy. I think he was just out of control. You know, it was like a wild swing. Too hard, too physical. But that wasn't as bad as the Gobert thing. You know? So, I don't know. Like, it's, it's uh, I don't know what benchmark he's going to have to press, but I do know he and Joe Dumars are extremely close. They talk all the time. They, he, they've known each other since childhood. Like Draymond has told me like, you know, I wouldn't be where I am without the Dumars family. Like he still calls Joe for life advice. Like whatever he's going through, whatever he's feeling like Joe is very well aware of the whole situation. And so I think, um, you know, he, I, it's almost like he's getting a harsher punishment or treatment because Joe knows him so well. Um, but they just, the league doesn't want to hear any explanations from him anymore. They just want it to stop. And that's, that's where we are. And if they want it to stop and they want it to stop through a certain amount of whether it's counseling or meetings or therapy or whatever the term is you want to use to describe the quote unquote work he needs to do, how can you have him come back any sooner than a month if you really want him to put in actual work? I mean, I think it's, um, I, I think you, they want to see that there's a recognition on his end that there needs to be work done. That's, that's my read of it, you know, cause at least in his public statements that hasn't been articulated. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It does. So if he starts the work, if he's putting in the work, then yeah. in your mind, that would allow him to come back sooner as opposed to when the work is quote unquote done. That sounds right to me. You know, I mean, I don't think it's like, you know, go, go, you know, with, I mean, look, this happened with John Morant too. And he, he had a quote unquote indefinite suspension. He went to a, a week of treatment and was back, you know, I mean, I, it was that enough. I don't, I clearly it didn't change the behavior. It happened again. And then he got 25 games. And so they don't want this to keep happening with Draymond. They don't want the, these, these lines to keep being crossed. And like, um, you know, I, I don't know what they do to do it. You know, they're, to me, it seems like they're setting it up for if it ever happens again, this could be you're out. You're done for the rest of the season. Hmm. I mean, they're setting this up for like even longer next time. Like that's, you know, that's kind of where they, you know, where this seems to be going, like an escalation of, of games. Now, could I see a world in which he seems super contrite and everything changes in the next week? Sure. You know, and, and gets into therapy or whatever it's going to be, you know, like, uh, you know, whatever he needs, I don't, I don't know, you know, but they, I clearly, whatever conversations he has had with the league have, have they don't, they don't even want to hear it anymore. Mm-hmm. Does that makes sense. It feels like, yep. it feels like they don't, you know, you know, when people just don't want to hear what you have to say anymore, it's just not about words anymore. Yep. Yep. You know, absolutely. So, well, yeah. Go ahead. This feels like with me, with him and, and, you know, I don't, I don't know. Is it fair? You know, I, like, you, you should say like each incident should be judged on its own, but it's, they've made it pretty clear. It's not being judged on its own. It's being judged in light of previous context and previous incidents. Ramona Shelburne, ESPN with us. Will it in dibs 95, seven, the game, uh, Ramona, big picture, longer term. What do the Warriors do about this? I mean, they just have to, um, 
they just have to wait and see how he is. I, I got to tell you, I, I still think there's a lot of support for him in that building. I, I think this notion that they're going to get tired of his antics and trade him or something, I don't get that feeling from anyone in any position of authority at all. Mm. I think they are still very fiercely loyal to him and understand how important he is to their team. They, they just want the same thing, which is for these incidents to stop. I think the bigger question then spills over maybe even to Clay Thompson in terms of if this season continues to go south as it has so far, and if Draymond's unavailable and Clay continues to struggle, do you get any sense that there will be motivation to, quote, blow it up and maybe try to rebuild around only Steph? That's an interesting question. Um, I, I the, the, the sense I've had from the work all year is that they – they still really true. Hold on a second. <laughs> My earbuds just live parents. Oh, 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 I thought no, I thought the, there it was, was the AirPod. I I, I it thought your like, uh, dinosaur chicken nuggets were next to you also, and you needed no, to get those like, to the kids. All of a sudden, the AirPod must have come out of my ears slightly, and then it started going on speaker. It was weird. Yeah, okay, it's crazy. So Damn, I AirPods. think um, I think um, my my senses with the Warriors is is every everything they have tried to set up. Every time you talk to them, they still feel like they have a really good team. They just haven't gelled yet. Like guys just aren't playing well. Like they, I, I, I haven't felt like that external narrative about them, that the dynasty is over, that it's all done, that everyone's cooked or whatever. That's external. Like, I, internally, I think there is definitely some worry about why Clay and Wiggins have not been effective this year. There's some, there's some, soul searching there and there's some like, okay, we're making changes and lighting a, maybe that lights a fire under one or both of them. Um, but like, I was just with them a lot last week and there was, there was no crisis of confidence. They were, they were fine. They keep thinking they're going to still be a really good team. Like one person even said to me, like we've literally given away four games. We should be whatever it is, 14 and eight at that time. You know, they, they, I mean, they, I don't, I can't disagree with that. I think they gave away the Clippers game in LA. I think they gave away the Oklahoma game, both Oklahoma games, right? I mean, there was the Sacramento game. They, they've kind of given away a lot of games that they could have that they could have won. Yeah, they and, stole and, they stole a couple too early. Like, I, you know what yeah, I wonder, Ram- Ramona? Is it lip yeah. service though? Because I'll tell you what, a lot of people wonder here. They said the same thing all last year. We're a championship uh-huh. squad. We're a championship squad. Yeah. And then game six happens in L.A., and they couldn't get to a microphone fast enough to be like, yeah, we really weren't a championship squad. So yeah, are, you, are, you, are you buying the line this year? Uh, for now, I am, because it was, it was not a line when things were bad. It was a, when they came into the year, people felt like the chemistry was awesome. They felt like the team was hungry and everybody was loving Chris Paul. And there was a lot of enthusiasm about Kaminga. There was, there just really were good feelings around the team coming into the season. And so thing, and they started off well too, you know, and then things really took a turn and they've just sputtered and sputtered and sputtered. And a lot of it's been connected to, you know, Draymond suspension. Like when he's not out there and when it's a big distraction for as long as it is, like it's, it's hard for them to, it's hard for them to function as the Warriors. They just, you know, you can you can get away with bad Clay or bad Wiggins if you still have Draymond and Steph, but you can't get away with the, you know, bad Clay, bad Wiggins if you don't have Draymond. Right. And if yeah. Draymond is not only not there and functioning, but a huge distraction. And I wonder, Ramona, how much of this affects the ongoing question about Steve Kerr and his contract? And have you gotten any sense of Steve Kerr maybe being a little bit more reticent about signing on for, for more of this? I haven't gotten that sense. He did say something I thought was interesting the other day, or not the other day, but like when, when he was asked about it, I guess preseason, he said something like, I'm comfortable playing it out. You know, like I'm comfortable going into the office. Kind of the same way Bob Myers said, right? Like, you know, playing it out and seeing where things are and how things are, et cetera. Um, you know, it's this all, this all, when, when we look back on these last few years of Warriors history, I think the time that you should look back towards is right after they won the championship. Okay. Um, there was a bunch of guys that I think were in line for extensions, whether it be Bob Myers or Steve Kerr, Draymond Green, um, who were not really offered extensions right after in the wake of that 22 championship. And, um, 
a lot of things that have happened since have are directly tied to those guys not not getting the bag or not getting that reward for coming together and winning a title in 2022, you know? Um, and then the uncertainty that is sort of opened up in and around everybody's futures, whether it be Draymond last year, I think that was uncomfortable for him going into the year. I think there was a lot of the period over the summer where he was really unhappy with the whole thing. Um, so yeah, it's been like that for a while. And, and uh, you know, I think, We'll we'll look back and say was that a mistake? I don't know. I mean, did they if they had signed those guys to extensions, does the same thing happen? Except now you're on the hook for a bunch of money, maybe. Um, but it certainly left the um, the possibility for this kind of dysfunction, this kind of uncertainty that sort of pervaded the last couple of years. Ramona, nothing happens in this organization without a green light from number thirty. Um, what do you think? he is thinking right now about all of this because he's had Draymond and Clay's backs all along. Uh, the sense I got from Steph the other day, I thought he was fine. I think he was, he's frustrated. He wants to win. He's playing hard. He knows what it means that they keep losing. He's sort of in a state of course mode. I know he and Draymond are very close. They talk all the time. I didn't get the vibe that he had any issues with Draymond. Um, you know, I think what he says to his face, what he would say publicly, like there's no, there's no Steph venting to other people that he's not saying to Draymond's face. Right. I think everybody's kind of in the same place on it, which is we love you. We need you, but you've got to find a way to be out there. You've got to find a way to keep yourself on the court. And you know, that's, that's really the bottom line. It's, it's the ball is in his court. He's got to find a way to mitigate his behavior, control his behavior enough that he's not continually in the line of fire. Here. Yeah, you know what's crazy though, Ramona. The more he, the harder he tries to stay on the court, the less he's on the court. I know. I know. It's just whatever he's doing is not working. So you got to do something different. You know, like, and I and I think it starts with a sort of just recognition that this is a problem. You know, and there's a sort of. Um, Long, you know, I, I have to wait till he speaks on it. You know, I've talked to him a lot throughout this, but I, I haven't heard from him since last night. And, and I don't, um, I don't think there's a huge recognition of like the pattern of behavior. I think there's a sort of, you know, this is a challenge I'm going to meet and I'm, I, you know, I can't change who I am and how I play. I'm just going to, you know, tighten things up. And it's, it's not a, it's not a, it's a, it feels like a micro issue each time for him rather than a macro issue. So I think, you know, I, let's, let's wait and see what he says when he finally does talk. I think it'll be a few days. Ramona, were, were you just referring to Draymond or Steph? Did you, did you talk to Draymond last night? Not last night, no. Not last I, night. I didn't talk to him. Not last, not after they suspended him, you know. Yeah. But within the last couple of days, yeah, after the, you know, we talked after the Nurkic thing, but it wasn't, it wasn't before the suspension. And so it was kind of, you know, I think with uh, I think with him, he's still in that same place. He's still in that same place, and I think this is the harshest ruling of all. And I don't I don't know where his head's at after that. So you, it takes do, a little time to process. Yeah, do you? Do I'm you gonna, guys, I'm gonna have to go in a minute. Okay, okay. all right, yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, do it. Juice juice refills for everyone. Story to get out, and I'm like getting my text. My texts are blowing up here. So okay, um, Momo, thanks. Yeah. Okay, all right, thanks, guys. I appreciate it, Ramona Shelburne, ESPN.